hello, my name is Serena Richardson. I'm the RSTP trainer for Ottawa and Northern Ontario, and I would like to welcome you to this webinar where we'll be presenting information, guidance, links, and resources on the availability of settlement services in Ottawa during COVID-19. For our agenda today, part one, we have our settlement agencies um, who are representing and going to discuss some of the services they have available at their organization. Uh, and part two is going to be IRCC's guidance for private sponsors and supporting newcomers during COVID-19. And each of those segments will be followed by questions. Here are our panelists. We have Roya Atmar from CCI Ottawa. Yara Rossi for OSISO, as well as Yemeni Abede. Yasmina, again, as I mentioned, is from the YMYWCA. And again, myself, Serena, for RSTP. I wonder if we could start first with Roya. Introduce yourself and give a little brief explanation about um, your organization. And then we'll move on to OSISO panelists. And then we will have our representative from the Y close us off. So if you don't mind starting us off, Roya, I'd appreciate it. Thank you so much, Serena. Good morning, everyone. My name is uh, Roya Atmar, and I am a sponsorship program coordinator with Catholic Center for Immigrants. Um, Catholic Center for Immigrants is initially a settlement agency that's been out there for, I would say, over 60 years. and. Uh, um, we have uh, <clears throat> different services for newcomers and refugees, and uh, our main delivery is settlement services for newcomers, refugees, and uh, those who are planning to come to Canada in the future. Uh, we also have housing programs that are helping people uh, in terms of evictions and uh, tenant and landlord issues. Um, one of the major programs we are running is sponsorship, which I'm coordinating, and then which we are helping people with community group sponsorships. And so uh, we are also a sponsorship agreement holder in the city of Ottawa. And um, one of the other services we have are uh, for government-sponsored refugees, that is our Sophia House, where government-sponsored refugees will be placed in it, and uh, then they're moving to their more permanent uh, housing situation. And we do have a group of people who are working with them at the very initial stage of their arrival, and the it's team called Community Connection Team. Yeah. And we also do have... Um, um, CSS uh, that are working with the clients that are quite vulnerable and uh, mentorship programs and a bunch of other programs that right now are working under uh, umbrella of settlement or community connection. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I will be here to answer to any questions that may arise in terms of programs we are delivering. Wonderful. Thank you so much. If we can move on to our representatives from OSISO, that would be great. Okay, thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Also from my side, thank you for inviting us. Um, so I'm the second counselor intake at OSISO. Um, at the, and OSISO is as well, like CCI, it's a settlement agency um, operating in Ontario, mainly in Ottawa. Um, and we have different departments. We provide different services to our uh, clients, mostly newcomers. Uh, one of the program is the settlement and integration program where settlement workers uh, give support, to provide support to newcomers by providing information and guiding them through their new life here in Ottawa. Then we have the YOSISO, which is the program for newcomer use. Um, and YOSISO is operating um, fully as well now during um, the pandemic and the OSISO provides um, different activities to newcomer use between the age of 13 and 25, uh, 24, excuse me. And then we have the link, the language instruction program. Um, and it's online until further notice. And link classes offer various levels from literacy, like link classes are of, um, classes offer various uh, English classes um, from uh, literacy to Canadian language benchmark seven. Um, as well, then we have the MLO, Multicultural Liaison Officers, who usually work in schools all over Ottawa. However, now with the pandemic, they um, work from home, but they do keep providing services to their students, to parents, as well as school staff by phone and email. 
Um, then we have the counseling program, uh, which is offered to newcomers who experience torture or political persecution and need somebody to talk with. Um, then we have the community economic development program, um, which is the uh, mentorship program um, to support uh, newcomers with, uh, with the first step uh, towards employment. Thank you very much. Great, thank you so much. And Yemeni, if you can introduce yourself, please, and uh, a little bit about your role at OCISO. Okay, my name is Yemane Abede. I am the group five, uh, group, groups of five uh, facilitator. And that program is within the assessment and integration program. So I mainly deal with uh, giving information on eligibility criteria for the, for the sponsors and also uh, on the process of the group of sponsorship. So that's basically uh, what I do at OCSO within the seminar integration program. Wonderful. Thank you so much. If we can have you share, Yasmin, about uh, your role with the YMCA, YWCA uh, Newcomer Services. Hi, good afternoon, and well, still good morning. <laughs> um, my name is Yasmina, thank you for having me. I have been with the Newcomer Information Center for over 10 years, helping newcomers. The Y itself is a um, huge organization that has many, many programs that helps um, uh, newcomers and the community in general. Uh, the Y is well known, of course, by the health and fitness and recreation programs, but um, we have um, multiple programs that are very focused on newcomers. And uh, my program uh, specifically is a point of referral, a point of uh, reference uh, for a lot of recent arrivals who just uh, get uh, in Ottawa and they trying to kind of understand or navigate the system around. We have a lot of service providers and uh, settlement agencies in the community. And uh, sometimes it could be um, the, 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 the so many information can sometimes could feel overwhelmed for someone who is new to Canada. So we um, take a lot of pride in, in taking these new uh, or recent arrivals and give them a kind of like a picture of how to get around, how to access services and under the umbrella of the Y as well. We have the Language Assessment Center, who is another um, um, point, initial point that most of the newcomers have to, in order to access any language provider, they will have to go through the language assessment to obtain um, the Canadian language benchmark and then be referred to a school board. So as well, we have employment services that they are very focused on, on newcomers and they can get help uh, in how to uh, uh, get a job, make sure the job search strategies are the most effective one, their uh, resume cover letters, they are all uh, in place and ready uh, for the job market. And the employment and e-commerce services is kind of like in my focus, but again, the Y itself has um, um, other programs that, that the, the family shelter, um, they have uh, other more specific employment um, services that are focused on youth or they're focused on uh, trades uh, or horticulture, um, um, destination employment, the build done. Uh, which is more pre-arrival. So we have a variety um, of programs. Um, they all can be found on our website, which is www.ymcayywca.ca. You can uh, uh, see all the entire list. Okay, thank you so much. Let's start at the top again. Um, I'm going to ask Roya to uh, start out and give us a, uh, a picture of what has been happening um, at CCI Ottawa. How are you um, functioning? You're working from home, obviously. What kind of services are available for uh, privately sponsored refugees and their sponsors to access? 
Uh, thank you so much, uh, Sorino, for organizing this and uh, letting the people know that we are still um, here. We are ready to help them. In terms of uh, delivery of services and Catholic Center for Migrants, um, all the departments, as I mentioned before, our settlement department, community connection, client service, uh, youth under both settlement and community connection, and our matching programs are working and running with full force, except our mood of delivery has changed a little bit because um, our office door is close to client for the safety of the client and uh, workers, uh, but our essential services or um, essential workers like our reception and everybody else is in the office, they are receiving calls. The calls are being directed to workers on a hourly base and all the workers are in contact with their um, with the new and with the existing clients, especially if someone has, say, for example, if someone calls and say we have a question um, about how to sponsor my cousin who's currently um, I, in Uganda, a very typical uh, question for a privately sponsored uh, group who would like to sponsor, uh, they will right away get their information and they'll send that information to me via email and I'll connect with that person and they'll set up a phone appointment or a video call appointment. So we are using different platforms to connect with our sponsors. Um, we, we talk with them, we provide them with the information, uh, we review their documents, uh, we review their forms, uh, we provide them with information about the uh, financial guidelines, about what they need to have and what their refugee have, need to have. Basically everything that was happening in person uh, during an appoint in a appointment in our office, uh, we are delivering them over the phone call, email or a video call. It all depends on the preference because uh, most of the people um, I've realized that they like to hear my voice. They want to have confirmation that I said something to them rather than email. Um, and some people are trying to show me their documentations or share their uh, concerns in terms of the forms. So for those, we usually uh, either um, organize a video chat uh, because that allows me to share a screen with them or, see, or have a or look their screen or they can just email email me their documentation. Same as for our other um, uh, departments, uh, our youth uh, department has been very, very busy delivering uh, online um, info session in terms of applying uh, for uh, the, the funds that are being provided by um, for for students uh, by province, provincial government and also some of our younger people who are working and are students and they are having now eligibility uh, to apply for the SERP that are personal for students or portion for people who are employed. So um, services are on and ongoing. Um, everyone who uh, was out uh, were dealing, if you are a sponsor and you're are running into issues that you need support in terms of settlement, connect with us. If you have a, a newcomer that you sponsored and they've been here and they have issues, any type, settlement, housing, uh, employment, uh, they are very welcome to connect with us. Uh, we have different teams uh, that are helping, that are still out there and are still helping them. Um, so the best way to basically get to us if you're a privately sponsored person is just connect with me and I'm uh, gonna connect you with the appropriate uh, team in our organization. Um, well, what else I'd like to say? So yeah, nothing has changed except you will not see us for next, I would say couple of weeks or um, a while, but you will hear us you will talk to us and you can email us if you're there we're out there to support you with all the needs as we used to do and also for those uh, i was just mentioning that to serena we have um, catholic center for immigrants uh, under the sponsorship program we have monthly info sessions for the sponsors and uh, for people for for current sponsors and for potential sponsors it's it's every last thursday of the month and the one that i'm running this week uh, next week is going to be on 28th. I'll be sending uh, information to Yara and to uh, Serena to share with people that they know, and you can connect with me via that. Okay. Um, anything else? I guess I, I talked a lot, Serena, didn't I? No, that's wonderful. I appreciate it. At this time, let's move to Yara. Uh, and uh, Yara, explain some of the uh, ways that you're providing services um, and some of the uh, activities or programs that uh, are available 
at OSISO. Okay, thank you, um, Serena, for um, inviting oh, us, great. for organizing one that. More, sorry, one more thing. I just realized uh, some people are having difficulty hearing as well. So um, if our presenters could um, maybe move closer to their microphones uh, or speak a little bit louder, that would be helpful. Thank you so much. Go ahead, Yara. Okay, thank you. Um, so our like OSISO's, uh, OSISO remains fully operational and focused on its mission during uh, the pandemic. Um, uh, we had uh, we adapted our work to of course working we work from home, um, but all our programs and services are available. Um, of course, online. Um, we use different um, web options like Zoom teleconference when a, a settlement worker, for example, communicates with one of their client. Um, then we use, of course, email, phones, um, and then uh, we try to um, always keep in touch with our clients and follow up. Um, all, as I mentioned before, all our um, programs keep um, are operational. Um, so basically I'm the intake worker. So whenever a new newcomer try, needs some support, um, I would assign this person to a settlement worker who then um, analyzes the situation and then refers the person to different programs, sometimes also to a different um, settlement agency. Um, so, for example, we have Yosiso, which is the program for newcomer use, and usually they they have all their they uh, work uh, on Bank Street on 1800 Bank Street, but due to ban the pandemic, of course, they cannot now. Um, so they focus mainly on providing information to to use uh, by different by Facebook, Instagram, Zoom, and Google Hangouts, as well as um, um, uh, WhatsApp. So, so everything is still operational, and um, they do uh, different activities. For example, you see, so they support now that kids um, work from home and have to do homework. They support kids with their homework. They um, uh, organize like dance activities online. They uh, do different activities. Like really, it everything remains operational, but really we try to. Um, follow up with our clients and keep them busy also during the pandemic as well as support them. Then of course we have the clinical counseling. This is another way th that we try to um, support our clients also during the pandemic. Many people feel lonely and have um, well need people to speak with. So so of course when somebody um, calls me and informs me that the person, that the doctor or or not a settlement age, a settlement worker told them to get in touch with the counselor pro, uh, counselor program, then of course I refer them to the counseling pro department, which then follows up with them. Um, and then of course our mentorship programs also remain active and and uh, newcomers are being connected to mentors. Uh, and the same with the, link, the language instruction program where before everything was on Bank Street and, and there were classes of up to 22 people in the classes, but now the um, English professors, the English teachers, they try to communicate with their students by giving them homework, by trying to to keep to keep them busy and give and uh, staying with them in touch by by uh, Zoom or by different other uh, platforms. Thank you very much. That's wonderful to hear. Um, that's one of the. Uh, uh, concerns I think I had personally was wondering whether uh, English language was going to be able to continue and how that was being handled. So uh, much appreciated to hear that that's going on. Um, okay, can we move to um, Yemeni? Um, if you can talk about uh, in your role, um, how you are um, connecting and uh, connecting us uh, um, newcomers, uh, in particular uh, privately sponsored newcomers, um, to settlement services. How does that happen and what kind of programs uh, are you aware of, maybe some specialized programs that our sponsors might not be aware of? Okay. Um. The, the the work that I do uh, here at the OCC is very labor intensive because uh, it involves uh, working on the uh, application 
file that needs to be submitted to uh, Rocco. So uh, we had a lot of person to person meeting with the, uh, our clients. So after the COVID-19 uh, situation, uh, this person to person meeting uh, was not possible. So uh, was also the uh, facilitation of uh, the work. And some of the uh, ap application files were almost finish it just waiting for example the uh, bank letters for the money that uh, had been put in trust fund at the banks so uh, once the letter is what uh, once we receive the letter from the bank we had to uh, uh, that with the application and then give it to the uh, client to send them to uh, rock but that was not possible because of this because we we're not allowed to work from the office uh, so this created a uh, kind of problem and uh, later uh, consultation with my manager we arranged uh, for one week uh, uh, one day per week uh, going to the office and then uh, uh, working on the files and from a uh, mailed application we changed our process to email so we had uh, i had to go to the office once uh, a week and scan them scan all the documents as the as per the uh, uh, ircc uh, requirements on submitting application online so i then uh, email those uh, scan documents to uh, our clients and they can uh, submit the application online so uh, the way that i uh, uh, communicate with my clients was to uh, email and phone calls and uh, and lately we are uh, uh, planning to work with our clients through zoom that's what it That's great. Thank you so much, Yemeni. Yeah, it's definitely been an interesting process as uh, many sponsors are finding that, uh, you know, the past practices of working with forms face to face with their clients, uh, filling them out and then submitting them by mail just is not uh, happening now. And so it's good to hear that sponsors and yourself are moving towards uh, submitting by email. I um, want to encourage you, it's, it is difficult uh, at the beginning for sponsors to make that transition. But once you've done it once, um, you get the hang of it and it gets easier. Uh, I can tell you I have worked on that myself uh, over the years. And, um, and the good news is that it doesn't cost any money to mail uh, to email as it did for mailing. Uh, a lot of sponsors would send by registered mail or perlator or something for tracking the package. And so this way you, you know it gets received instantaneously. Uh, and during this time, because they're able to work with electronic documents, emailing is um, uh, an easier way to work right now. Uh, it doesn't mean that those mailed applications are not going to be processed. It just means they can't process them until they are allowed to go back into the office at Rocco. And so uh, rest assured, mailed applications will be looked at, but unfortunately that can't happen until they can start working again. Okay, um, at this point, uh, Thank you so much for your patience. Uh, Yasmina, I'm going to move to you and any programs that maybe uh, have ceased or that are uh, still ongoing remotely. Currently with this um, uh, situation, we most of the programs they are being adapted um, uh, online. Of course, we have to learn how to find this new working dynamic, uh, working virtually, working from home. We currently um, Still receiving a lot of clients uh, inquires over the phone by email and as well we connect them with the, all the settlement workers that we've um, been working very closely together for um, for many years so um, we do have a, a list of uh, handy uh, settlement workers who usually are in-house in our office like uh, we uh, schedule them in a rotation schedule but now we all communicate by email by phone and we make sure that we connect those clients and refer those clients to the right settlement worker uh, worker according to the needs of those clients that could buy, uh, could be from um, housing needs to immigration related questions sometimes we um, uh, one big focus of our work is uh, immigration forms and uh, we um, being i guess uh, becoming very knowledgeable about navigating the um, the 
uh, IRCC website, which is CIC website, and um, trying to um, walk through the process with the client, explain them the document checklist, the processing times, and all the um, the forms that sometimes also uh, become um, challenging for them, not only for um, newcomers, but even for uh, Canadian um, born. Um, so we're just trying to educate pretty much um, newcomers and help them to get around, uh, access the services, access the right service. And that's why uh, we do after um, an individual assessment of needs that we do with the client. And uh, currently we're still um, operating, uh, learning this new dynamic. Um, um, I, I believe um, um, Microsoft Teams has been a great, a helpful tool that we've been um, using for our a daily contact with the staff, with the uh, partners and, and clients as, as well. Wow, that's fantastic. Um, it, it's so encouraging to hear um, how much work is still possible to be done in supporting uh, newcomers um, who are, yeah, experiencing Canada, maybe for the first time. I know some have recently arrived like uh, at the end of March uh, after that time period we haven't had any recent arrivals um, yeah, so at this point in time if you have any questions for any of our uh, settlement agency representatives uh, about their programs how to access them uh, maybe who to contact about uh, related issues to uh, connecting with language services, counseling services, employment, uh, connecting with other newcomers, perhaps, uh, how that can be done during COVID-19. Okay, we have a question that someone has typed in. Uh, Allison is asking, do you have guidance documents about filling out taxes for newcomers? Do you have a list of Arabic-speaking accountants we could possibly contact? Uh, Anybody can answer that one. <laughs> I believe she's referring to the um, uh, volunteer tax clinics that um, they've been running in the community for uh, a few years now. I think uh, pretty much every settlement agency, they have designated as, um, settlement workers that they focus uh, on helping, on, on running those uh, volunteer tax clinics. Uh, if that's what the, this is clients um, referring to, those clinics are um, um, free for um, what is considered low income uh, families. So they have to make sure that they qualify. Um, usually the minimum requirement is like they, uh, let's say if they are looking at filing now 2019, they have to, they, one of the requirements like they have to have filed 2018, so the previous year and also have um, a household um, um, income, I believe, of uh, less than $40,000 a year. Okay, thank you so much. I've got Mariana on the line. Um, Mariana, um, she, I believe, is with Jewish Family Services. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I didn't have a chance to contact you guys uh, for this webinar, but I'm gonna unmute you and uh, you can share with us what you wanted to wanted to say about uh, about this question. Hi everyone. Um, good morning or afternoon. Do you hear me well, or do you prefer me to put my mic on? No, I can hear you, Mariana. Go ahead. Okay, I just wanted to um, to say um, that we do have JFS does the tax cleaning every day. We're um, appointed by um, CRA to do that. We do it in English and Arabic, and we still run it remotely. So we have an intake, um, um, a settlement worker who does an intake and then appoints a settlement worker with access to CRA um, to do that remotely. So if you have anybody who couldn't get an access in any other clinic, um, I believe we can help if they contact us. Thank you so much. Did any of our other panelists have um, anything to add? If I could add, um, it would be important if uh, Adriana can also, um, when she sent that information, because we also very close very closely with them, um, a settlement worker from JFS who help us to refer clients who are looking for tax. 
um, uh, to complete your uh, income taxes. Uh, the only all, also another requirement for that specific settlement worker is that the client have to be ISAP eligible. So that means that they have to be either a permanent resident or have received their um, confirmation of permanent residence. So it makes it sometimes challenging when you have a citizen or or a client that is not eligible. So if they can um, add that, that would be very, very helpful. So, and I will also be very interested in receiving that information too as well. Absolutely. Great, thank you so much. Okay, let's see. I noticed we have some other questions here. Um, let me see. Uh, are language assessments for adults being done by Zoom or other online methods? That's from Norma. Norma is with uh, one of our SAWs. Um, I will take a shot on that, uh, Sarina, because I just received information on that. This is Ryan from Catholic Center for Immigrants. So uh, in terms of the assessment, uh, assessments are currently not being done from what uh, we got from YMCA. Um, the assessment that people had uh, were it initially, uh, initially were good for one year, but right now those assessments are good for two years. Um, so whoever had them, they can go ahead and use them. Unfortunately, for those who are needing new assessment, they will need to uh, wait a little bit until the services are back on. And this was information I received yesterday, unless uh, there isn't something added in terms of a new mood of assessment uh, that I also like to know about. Uh, but this was what we received yesterday from Assessment Center. If I could add, the Language Assessment Center, unfortunately, what was one of those uh, programs that was uh, closed uh, since uh, uh, March 15, and because they could not operate uh, remotely. So they, I know since the day they have been closed, they've been working very, very hard um, with IRCC in order to create um, a new tool to help um, clients um, uh, remotely and maybe do something. I know they, they, uh, they're about to announce something. I don't want to anticipate to that, but I know uh, beginning of June, it, it might look uh, kind of um, optimistic. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> just just want to add to it that if they, uh, they had an assessment done in the past and they uh, couldn't join a school, their assessment is still valid because most of people are under assumption that the assessment are uh, getting expired, but this time there's an exemption, so two years, good to go. Wonderful. That's, that's encouraging news, and we look forward to uh, the good news to come, potentially. Um, in anticipation uh, for some of these questions, you'll notice uh, in your control panel, there is a drop-down list for handouts. Um, I've attached three of them that may be helpful for sponsors uh, and their sponsored newcomers. Um, one of those was a link to online resources for ESL and even a self-assessment tool for those who haven't been able to get uh, an assessment done. Uh, that way they could keep their uh, English language skills going in the interim, but uh, looks like we won't necessarily need that, but it could be a useful tool for the future. Um, if uh, newcomers are having difficulty or a bit of uh, lag time in getting assessments done, or there's some great tools in that attachment as well for um, even practicing English uh, and some homework sheets where they can test themselves. So take a look at that. Um, while the webinar is going on, you're free to download those. Um, and when I do my follow-up email, I will send those uh, as attachments as well. So that's great. Um, if there are no more questions, I want to thank our guests. Um, I'll just wait, pause for a moment. If you have a last minute question for them, uh, just raise your hand. Again, to raise your hand, just click on the little picture of the hand in your control panel. Or you can type in the box if you don't want to speak. Oh, yes, we have a question. Look at that. Norma, yay, we get to hear your voice. I have unmuted you, go ahead. 
Um, I wanted to point out that, uh, and I'm sure everybody who's on the call probably knows, um, that um, uh, uh, Ottawa Refugee Sponsorship Group, I think it was called, have a Facebook page. Mm -hmm. And there were three things on there just recently that are uh, uh, helpful to uh, uh, groups. And one of them was, I think it's the... Uh, um, uh, immigrant women's uh, organization, I never get their name right, who uh, uh, have uh, something just for women to do with income tax that's coming up. Mm. Um, um, since I didn't refer it to anybody, I can't remember the exact date, but that is up on that right now. Uh, um, there are very frequently uh, things, uh, um, this particular event was up there, uh, so uh, it's something that uh, if there are uh, newer sponsors, um, uh, they might want to uh, join that group. Um, it's mm -hmm. very, very open group. All you have to do is uh, uh, type in. Uh, it's uh, uh, perhaps monitored, but I've never seen anybody not allowed to get onto it. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you so much. I will include a link to uh, direct you to the Ottawa uh, Sponsors Group. Uh, it's a Facebook group. I'll include yeah. that in my email as well. My follow-up. Thank you, Norma. I appreciate that. Okay, thanks. at this time, um, I want to give thanks to our presenters um, for joining us. Um, you're welcome to exit now as you need to, or you are more than welcome to continue uh, joining us for this presentation. Uh, at this point, I'm going to move on to um, how sponsors can support uh, their newcomers during this time of COVID. So thank you so much, um, Roya, Yara, Yemeni, and um, Yasmina. I appreciate you joining us. Thank you so much, you very much. I will be leaving because yeah. I have to go to office. Thank you for having Wonderful. me. I'll share Thank as well a link to our web, uh, our Facebook page because we also been very. Uh, one of the things we have learned during this time is to be active on social media, and uh, we also posting there all uh, very useful webinars we are hosting online as well. That I welcome everyone to keep an eye on it. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank very you much. so much, Thomas Ciso. Yeah. And you can reach us by phone, email, or uh, on Facebook as well. Or LinkedIn. Wonderful. That's great. Yeah, we'll include um, the links to the settlement organizations um, and the contact information as well for people. Okay. So um, to start off with, I want to talk about. Um, a letter that uh, sponsors should have received. Um, if you haven't received it, it's, it's okay. I've attached it again as a handout so you can uh, take a look at it. I'm just gonna summarize that email uh, so that you have an idea of what IRCC's guidance is um, for assisting sponsors to understand how, um, how sponsors can support um, their newcomers. Um, while addressing the unique settlement needs of sponsorships during this difficult time. Okay, and again, I will also make it available uh, in my follow-up email. Um, so IRCC acknowledges that we are living in extraordinary times and the significant impact of COVID-19 pandemic is having on the sponsorship community. Uh, they uh, share that sponsors have an important role to play to ensure that refugees continue to receive the standard levels of settlement support while also taking into account COVID-19 specific guidelines created by government at all levels. And with this in mind, um, IRC is, IRCC is expecting that sponsors will provide a basic orientation. And so some of the things you'll want to include in your basic orientation uh, is how to access local essential services, for example, 
How do I get to the nearest grocery store? What does that look like during COVID-19? Should I be going to the grocery store? Uh, assistance in completing applications for provincial health care, social insurance number, and Canada Child Benefit, um, all of which can be done online or by phone. And again, uh, most important um, as a basic level of support, um, newcomers need to know about how to access health care, um, what to look for um, uh, in this time of COVID about uh, interim federal health. Um, we'll talk about um, health care, uh, OHIP and interim federal health a little bit later, give you some more information, uh, but also most importantly, emergency services. We want to make sure that newcomers know how to get help when they need it if there is an emergency. Okay, so uh, one of the very important things that sponsors want to share with their sponsored newcomers is information, guidance, and supplies for COVID-19. These are guidelines uh, for private sponsors from IRCC. Um, we have heard stories of newcomers some of the uh, municipal rules and regulations and have received fines um, and mostly it's because they didn't know. And so it's very important to be able to uh, share information with them, help them understand, um, and also to, um, I think, uh, alleviate some fear. Um, sponsored newcomers, uh, newcomers in general, um, they, uh, they already have a challenge in uh, coming to a new country, not quite understanding some of the um, services available and uh, the expectations in their community, um, even, you know, the social distance and so information with your newcomers. And there are lots of tools available to help you do that. Okay. Um, uh, the CERB benefits, the Canadian Emergency Response Benefit, um, IRCC um, has indicated that private sponsored refugees who are eligible should apply for the CERB. And it is income support, uh, is considered income support, and will be counted as money they earn. So for sponsors, what that means is um, you can uh, reduce your monthly support with proof, of course, um, to the uh, monthly amounts that they receive if they have uh, been receiving the CERB. Uh, and so, yes, it can be deducted from overall financial supports as earned income. Uh, one thing I wanted to uh, help sponsors understand is um, the CERB is quite easy to apply for. Uh, the Government of Canada recognizes that that is a unfortunate loophole, but they want to make sure that money can get out to people who need it quickly. And they trust that in general, uh, people are honest <laughs> and that they will not apply uh, if they don't need it. So that being said, um, there may be, um, how do I say this, a spirit of, uh, you know, teaching people, oh, you can get this money and it's free and the government gives it right away <laughs> um, without complete understanding that um, it has implications for receiving it if you do not qualify. Um, and so it's really important for sponsors to teach their newcomers, um, you shouldn't accept this uh, and apply for it even if you have not worked in Canada and for uh, people who have worked in Canada and uh, either lost their jobs or cannot work um, because of COVID-19. And there will be a point in time where the government uh, CRA will be evaluating um, people who had received it and they may actually have to pay it back at a later date. So best not to jump onto that uh, application if you haven't been an employed person in Canada. And so it's good to help your newcomers understand that. Okay, and these uh, recommendations from uh, IRCC were from the 17th of April 2020 meeting with the IRCC officers. 
Okay, we have also been informed, sponsors have been informed that uh, post-arrival case reviews are going to continue during COVID-19. For post-arrival case reviews, um, we understand that um, IRCC is really uh, going to uh, continue this uh, for the reasons that they want to make sure that newcomers are doing okay and that they are receiving what they are supposed to be receiving, especially during this time. Uh, as sponsors, uh, you're well aware that newcomers are vulnerable um, in not knowing and not being informed and, and with language barriers in place. And so um, the post-arrival case reviews will be done. Uh, that being said, um, the RSAT team is more than willing to work with sponsors. They understand it's a challenging time to provide settlement services. Um, so they just ask that you give them a call if you have a concern. Um, they want to work with you in partnership with you to resolve some of these challenges. And they, they uh, encourage you to contact them as early as possible. Um, and that when sponsors do that, um, when a case review does happen, um, it can weigh in their favor. It adds to that um, uh, that case review evaluation. And so um, ultimately we wanna make sure that newcomers um, are not uh, left on their own. And so that's the spirit behind uh, continuing with post-arrival case reviews. Uh, sponsors are expected to provide refugees with the support as outlined in their sponsorship undertaking. And the program requirements remain the same and sponsors are expected to continue providing financial and non-financial support. And as I mentioned, IRCC officers will remain flexible and exercise discretion in assessing sponsors' efforts to provide the necessary supports. And for any case specific questions, as always, for any pre-arrival questions, you can contact the Resettlement Operations Center in Ottawa, Rocco. Uh, and for post-arrival, please contact the Resettlement Services Assurance Team and their emails are listed there. Okay, so supporting newcomers during COVID-19. Okay, the goal of settlement support is to empower and equip newcomers to become self-sufficient by providing assistance as they integrate into the Canadian way of living. And so we wanna encourage sponsors to start thinking, or maybe you've already been thinking these questions. Um, uh, think about things like how can your group stay informed about what has changed or what is new regards to COVID-19? Um, how can your group assist newcomers during this time of physical distancing? Uh, do they need to have access to internet, to a computer? Do they need an interpreter or an interpreter, uh, interpretation service to help them understand? Uh, what kind of social activities uh, can you um, help them to do with their kids? What's available? How can those children meet new friends in their neighborhood? Uh, with the um, physical distancing measures uh, that they have to have in place. Uh, and so in the next few slides, I'm gonna take a look at what's currently available for newcomers to access um, uh, with your assistance as needed. Okay, we're gonna start with government services. What is available right now? Uh, the Canada Child Tax Benefit, of course, you can apply for that online. Um, so that's pretty easy, pretty st uh, straightforward. I think that was the practice in the past. So nothing has changed. But what has changed is you can apply for SIN cards online now. Um, and so you can go to the Service Canada website and uh, the link is there for you. And of course, the Canadian Emergency Response Benefit for those who qualify. Um, and when there are language challenges or difficulties in understanding, you can uh, either apply online or for assistance, you can call this number. Now, of course, with any number that's been given out, uh, there could be a waiting period uh, sitting on the telephones. So uh, be advised that may be the case. Okay, and so for Service Ontario, 
um, they have created a website uh, page um, for you to take a look at what is closed and what is still available. And so I encourage you to go take a look at that um, so you know what you can access with your newcomers. Uh, there's quite a list and so um, it's, it's a valuable link to follow. Um, so there are still in-person services, but only at one location in Ottawa, and that is in the south uh, on Bank Street, Unit 5. Now, keep in mind, um, the service will be very slow, and as I expect, they are taking precautions for um, social distancing, uh, physical distancing, and so um, anticipate having to wait in line for quite a long time. But uh, if at all possible, you can uh, access any of these services online, I encourage you to do that instead. Okay, so for the City of Ottawa, updates on COVID-19 rules and restrictions. Uh, they are changing uh, kind of regularly. Uh, there's been some relaxed measures, um, I think, most recently this week, uh, been um, updated. And so I encourage you to uh, bookmark this link uh, on your web page and, and just, you know, peruse it every day and just see the rules and restrictions because as sponsors, it'd be really important for you to understand it so that you can communicate it to your sponsored newcomers um, as those rules start to roll out or some of the restrictions are, um, are, uh, are relaxed. So for now, um, currently all client service centers for the City of Ottawa are closed and that was at the time that I had um, researched this information so um, I'm not sure if any are open today but um, at the time I did the research they were all closed. Uh, Service Ottawa, however, um, they have an online account which allows access to multiple city services and information in one place. And so um, this may be a benefit to newcomers um, or sponsors to uh, gain access to services for Ottawa. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about healthcare services. The Public Health Agency of Canada website has resources in multiple languages to help newcomers understand COVID-19. There are fact sheets, videos, recordings, and infographics. Um, this is interesting. Uh, some of you probably already know this, but uh, for now, the three-month waiting period has been waived. And so uh, what that looks like is uh, potentially that interim federal health is not as um, critical to, uh, to receive for newcomers. Um, when I open up to questions, maybe some sponsors can enlighten me in case it's still important to uh, make application for interim federal health. But uh, for the time being, um, if newcomers call the info line, uh, they'll be registered immediately for OHIP coverage and provide with a transaction record that they can use to demonstrate eligibility um, until they receive the health card in the mail. Now, if anybody has experience with OHIP, I would love to hear from you uh, to see if those transcript records actually worked or not um, in the healthcare system. Uh, it'd be interesting to hear about that. Okay, and Counseling Connect, um, it, they provide free access to same day or next day phone or video counseling sessions. Yeah, uh, this service, Counseling Connect, is for children, youth, adults, and families in Ottawa and the surrounding area. And most importantly, there is no waiting list. So I encourage you, um, if counseling services are needed, that would be uh, a resource. Okay, continuing with healthcare services, uh, Ottawa Dental Society, um, they are providing dental emergency service for those who don't have a dentist um, or need emergency dental care, um, and you can call that number, 613-523-4185. Um, however, if clients are currently under 
interim federal health and not uh, receiving provincial benefits um, and have a dental emergency, they have a different number for you to call. Okay, Ottawa Newcomer Health Centre is still open and offering essential services to clients uh, and that was effective as of March 16th. They're providing services over the phone as much as possible. And you know, with that Newcomer Health Centre, I believe, um, they have uh, access to language access uh, program where they offer virtual interpretation support to service providers and their clients. And so I anticipate uh, private sponsors might fit into that category of a service provider. Not positive, but if anybody has any information on that uh, language access program that they could share with us during the question and answer period, that would be great. And here are some quick resources that might be helpful as well. Um, Telehealth Ontario uh, has a toll-free line um, right now, or not right now, at any time. It's only offered by the phone. Um, email advice is not available, and that's uh, where you can speak to a nurse to um, talk about any health concerns you might have before making a decision to go to a hospital or the need to um, receive medical care. Um, TIA Health, um, it is free with an OHIP card and there are doctors who are providing online appointments. Um, they will do prescriptions, referrals, requisitions, um, and uh, uh, can provide mental health care as well. And Connects Ontario, um, this is a service that is a live answer to questions 24-7 that is online or um, through chat, email, um, free and confidential health services information for people experiencing problems with alcohol, drugs, mental illness, and or gambling. Okay, so for employment assistance, uh, those of you in Ottawa may already be familiar with uh, World Skills, a nonprofit employment center dedicated exclusively to the employment needs of newcomers and the needs of the local labor market. And so uh, I encourage you to go check out their website and see what might be available for uh, employment services. Um, and then there's a website that I'm familiar with. Um, I uh, was formerly a SAW representative myself in the Toronto area, and we became familiar with helping newcomers work. And what this is, is a digital hub that provides support to private sponsors and other volunteers as they seek to help refugee newcomers find employment in Canada. And so when you go on the website, there's a lot of great information that's just general for sponsors to know uh, and, and for newcomers to learn about, you know, what kind of employment uh, do I want to take a look at? What is, you know, uh, a career path that I could potentially take that uh, is is a hot market for employment. And so those kind of, that kind of information is universal uh, that they provide on there. Now, some of the other services they, um, they list in for their events are uh, central to the GTA, but I know there's a lot of information you'll find valuable on that website. And again, that's helpingnewcomerswork.ca. Okay. For housing assistance, uh, we have Action Housing, uh, and again, there's a phone number and email contact information, and also Housing Help, uh, again, phone number and email contact information. Okay, for community services. Um, when sponsors are assisting newcomers with banking, um, it's a little different now because in the past, to open a bank account, some of you may have actually physically gone to the bank. And that's limited right now, and I'm not sure, you know, when that's going to open up. You might be able to find, you know, the odd bank that is open, possibly, um, and I'm not sure how it's functioning, but... Uh, it might be a good time to um, explore online banking and the ability to uh, open a bank account online. And so again, I'm looking to you sponsors to share any information you might have about your experience with maybe opening bank accounts online as an alternative. Grocery shopping, I think it's 
uh, one of the key things to assist your uh, newcomers with is to understand that uh, shopping for groceries has changed right now and for their safety and uh, the safety of others in case they may be sick um, is to uh, learn how to access uh, online shopping um, curbside pickup, maybe delivery, um, or if those are not options, um, you know, which is very possible given, you know, language um, limitations uh, early on in the sponsorship year, um, you know, helping them to understand uh, making one trip, uh, you know, maybe every few weeks and some of the precautions uh, that they'll want to take and some of the expectations of those grocery stores to maintain uh, physical distancing. Also wanted to mention too that the Ottawa Food Bank is still operational uh, and newcomers can receive help with food uh, if need be and you can call between 8 and 4 p.m. And I had a chance to speak to the Furniture Bank. Many of you may be familiar with the Furniture Bank, which is uh, connected with Matthew House Ottawa. Uh, they are still functioning with leaders. Uh, the staff picks out the furniture for the clients if they are agreeable to that, and they arrange for curbside pickup. Uh, and they are still accepting referrals from OCSO. And so uh, if you have client with, an, or sorry, if you have a newcomer with a need, um, speak to a settlement worker at OCSO and uh, we can get that referral made from the furniture bank. Using public transit, uh, many of you may already be aware, OC Transpo um, has the um, requirement for passengers to enter at the rear door of the bus. Um, and they will only accept Presto cards for payment, but if someone does not have one, which is quite possible, they will not be refused and they will be allowed to ride for free. Wearing of a mask on OC Transpo is not compulsory. However, it is advised since maintaining physical distancing may be a challenge uh, if there are lots of commuters. Okay, so for quarantine and safety measures, I want to speak a little bit about when, um, you know, the borders are opened or um, Canada starts receiving newcomers again. Um, we as sponsors really need to understand ourselves what the mandatory quarantine measures will need to be in place. Um, when I read the Quarantine Act, uh, which is... Um, where they implement some of these requirements due to COVID-19, um, sponsored refugees are going to have to know in advance before they leave for their flight to Canada uh, that they have to have a quarantine plan and it has to be um, suitable. <laughs> uh, I don't know how the government of Canada is going to define suitable, but uh, basically what it means is that they have to be able to describe um, to the official at customs, I think there'll be a quarantine officer there uh, doing a scan uh, to find out um, where they are staying and how long they're going to quarantine, that they have measures in place to go directly from the airport by private transport, um, and that they will not be in a housing location with anybody who is a vulnerable person, whether or not they are sick. Um, they will need to have a mask um, to uh, move from the airport to their quarantine location. They're not supposed to stop along the way. Um, so I encourage sponsors to uh, become familiar with those requirements um, even now in preparation so that you can provide information to your sponsored newcomers before arrival. And so uh, that is a 14-day self-quarantine require, self requirement. Um, I did read um, in some of the uh, articles online that um, the government of Canada has authorized that if there is not a suitable quarantine plan in place, um, the newcomer will be uh, placed into a quarantine facility, potentially a hotel, and uh, that the government of Canada will be picking up that cost. So uh, there's 
not much known right now more about that, um, but no need to worry that if the quarantine plan is not suitable, the newcomers won't be turned away. They will just be put into quarantine. Um, and so it will be helpful to stay connected with some of those port of entry um, uh, support services um, to be able to stay informed about uh, whether the newcomer was sent to one of those facilities because their quarantine plan was not sufficient um, or whether they will still be able to be received by their sponsors at the airport. Okay. Um, and you'll also want to provide the sponsor refugees with the quarantine plan that they can present to quarantine officials at the port of entry. Okay. Um, Ottawa Newcomers Family Reception Services. Um, again, those of you in Ottawa may already be familiar with them. Uh, when a newcomer needs to register for school, it is helpful to take them there first. Uh, but they are currently conducting uh, virtual intake meetings. So not to physically go to their office, but to contact them uh, and they can arrange for virtual intake meetings and place students at their home school based on their home address. Uh, typically, they would do a assessment um, and because they can't do that in-person face-to-face assessment, um, they're anticipating for 2020 and 2021 school year that intakes will depend on the Ministry of Health's guidelines. And so they don't know how that, what that's going to look like, but they are working on it right now. Uh, they expect that prior to schools reopening, if the restrictions are lifted, newcomer students will once again go to the uh, family reception services for an assessment. And then after that, they would be uh, placed into a school or program according to the assessment results. Some additional resources, again, for those new sponsors who aren't aware, uh, we have a information networking group uh, in Ottawa uh, information sharing called Refugee 613. Uh, many of the key stakeholders in the Ottawa area join together uh, to provide the best support possible uh, in the Ottawa region, supporting sponsors and sponsored newcomers. And so they have created a Facebook group called COVID-19 Community Information Exchange. Want to encourage you to um, sign up and join that group. I believe it's a closed group, um, but lots of information being shared there uh, on COVID-19 helpful resources. Uh, recently, they've also created some YouTube videos in multiple languages with information on the relaxed measures for visiting Ottawa Public Parks. So definitely share those videos out with your sponsored newcomers. Also, uh, for sponsored newcomers, uh, it's helpful to know that Ontario 211 provides live answer online resources uh, in 150 plus languages. They also have a web chat between 7 and 9 p.m. Uh, you can call uh, directly 211 or toll free or email to get help. Um, this is basically um, a one place catch all information uh, to find out where do I go to get this? How can I get help with that? <laughs> and so it's a useful number for newcomers to become familiar with uh, as they work towards self-sufficiency. Um, okay, some community resources and activities. Uh, for parks and recreation, it's really important to know where you can go. Um, again, I mentioned earlier, there were fines for breaching municipal restrictions that some newcomers to Canada uh, had been receiving. And so if you want to take a look at OntarioParks.com, they have a park locator of current parks that are available and open. And again, newcomers need to understand that even though the park is open, they still should be maintaining um, the social uh, physical distancing. And that's the uh, two meters, six feet. Okay, the Ottawa Public Library has tons of online content available. Um, they have in particular isolation recreation for adults and teens and accessing uh, materials in their own language for newcomers. So uh, to help pass the time while they need to quarantine, 
or while they are in the stay at home uh, practice during COVID-19, uh, this would be um, a wonderful resource for them to access. Again, uh, the YMCA offers uh, on their website, uh, ymcahome.ca, lots of fun videos about home fitness and activities that you can do with your kids um, uh, to keep busy. Um, and so another website that has great resources to help kids stay busy is simplemost.com. So as sponsors, uh, take a look at those and see what may be helpful to share with your sponsored newcomers. Using technology, um, as we uh, have had to limit kind of physical face-to-face -face interactions, uh, many sponsors have been turning to uh, technology and um, WhatsApp and Viber are two tools that uh, newcomers are already familiar with. So we encourage you to use those tools, become familiar with them. Uh, it will be um, in the best interest of newcomers if you learn to communicate with them in that way. Um, you do have other options available though, uh, Google Duo um, and Zoom and House Party and Messenger. All of those offer the ability to do video calls, uh, video group calls, video uh, games. You can do games together on some of them. And so you can watch TV together with uh, Netflix. Um, uh, I can't remember what that one is called, but um, yeah, now is the time to become very familiar with technology because uh, this is how we can best connect with newcomers in a safe way um, until uh, some more of the restrictions are lifted. And, uh, you know, there are some who um, are anticipating that there may be a second wave of COVID-19. And with that thought in mind, we may not be out of the woods um, where we can, you know, freely support face-to-face -face connection with newcomers. Or if we're doing so, we have to take many precautions. And so um, this use of technology will help you um, stay connected with newcomers. Okay, uh, for SAWs who work with a lot of newcomers uh, and they just wanna get information out quickly en masse, to those newcomers, um, there is a tool. Now, you do have to pay for it, I believe, uh, but it was developed uh, in partnership between uh, the Victoria um, Saw out west and um, IRCC, I think, and Google. Uh, maybe it was funded by IRCC and Google developed it, but it's a multi-recipient texting tool, and it can instantly deliver a text message to the recipient in their first language. And that is really cool. So you can type it out in English and it automatically populates to the person's preferred language. Um, and so this tool may be beneficial for SAWs need to communicate with several groups at one time. Okay, I'm gonna quickly go through some of these uh, using technology tools. Um, it's just quick information for you. Again, I'm gonna send out this PowerPoint presentation to you in a subsequent email so you can take your time to read through it more. But um, it is possible to translate a web page uh, in Google Chrome and the steps to do so are listed here. And translating of PDF documents, um, you can do that as well. So if you develop any content that you wanna share with your newcomers where you have a English version of a PDF document, you can translate it online. And so Google Translate has a tool uh, that you can use in your browser um, and you upload it and then it translates. Now, with any translation tools right now, they are getting better, but they're not perfect yet. Um, with any computer program, they need to learn <laughs> and they have to learn through volume of people using it making corrections and it adjusts the algorithms to uh, get a best translation possible. But do keep in mind, it's not perfect. And so if you have someone to quickly review it in that language you're translating it to, uh, that might be a good idea. Okay, 
Uh, YouTube has a YouTube translator. If you create a video, um, you can use the closed caption button, uh, which will capture um, the spoken um, audio into a English closed caption, and then you can change that language of the closed caption to a uh, translated language. And I believe there's possibly 60 or more languages that they have right now. Uh, again, Google Translate is a tool that you can use on your phone and you can instantly translate a conversation. So you would speak into the phone in English and translate to the language that you want the other person to hear. The phone speaks in a computer generated voice back to the person in their language and then they can reply to you in their language and so on. So uh, you can have instantly translate conversations. And the cool part about Google Translate is that it also works in conjunction with WhatsApp. And so these two links I've provided for you, um, you can watch videos to learn how to use Google Translate and also how to get it to work with the WhatsApp application. Okay, I'm nearing the end of this presentation. And so I want to let you know that RSTP website has continued COVID-19 updates as we receive information from IRCC. Uh, we will pass that on to you, but also you can keep apprised of those updates at this web link on our website. Well, I guess I might have uh, given you lots to think about. Um, I don't see any questions. And so I think I'm going to call an end to our uh, webinar. And if you still do have questions or you want to share anything with me, um, I can be reached at uh, by email srichardson at rstp.ca. And my phone number is there, 343-887-9875. That is a local Ottawa number where you can reach me. And again, of course, we do have resources on the rstp.ca website uh, for you to use and take a look at if you are a new sponsor. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a great day.